Hey everyone, this is Layla. Welcome to Heart for Art, where I show you guys some home decor DIYs, which are usually on a budget, inexpensive, with most likely items you have laying around your house. I, in today's video, I will actually be showing you guys how to make a riser, some outdoor pillows, and a long spring slash Easter garland. Uh, and I'm super excited about these ones because they did not cost pretty much next to nothing. So why don't we go ahead and get ready and jump into these DIYs. All right, guys, let's go. In DIY number one, I will be showing you how to make Dollar Tree placemat pillows. These are the one, the placemats that we can actually wipe down with a wet towel. They are good for outdoor as well as indoor, and I will be making mine for outdoors, for my outdoor decor. And in the end, I'll show you pictures where I have them placed. It's kind of a little bench that I have outside and it says stay a while. So I usually like to put pillows on there depending on the season. These colors are so pretty and vibrant. I mean, you can see them from down the street. Like there's no line. There's like, oh, there's pillows there. They're so pretty and bright. Now I don't cut the edges of mine like uh, I've seen done on YouTube by other people. I take a, I want to think, I want to say it's called a seam ripper but it's a little notch and you just put it inside the seam and you rip it and then you start pulling the thread and it all comes apart i have only done it to one edge and the other three are as is like whatever they came with the factory and i stuffed them nicely and i didn't even sew it i just put some hot glue and they are holding up great and where i live man the temperature changes like there's no end i'm on the east coast so the temperatures go hot one day, cold the other, but they're holding up really, really well. And I love the way that they look, and this is what they look like together. In DIY number two, we are going to make a terracotta riser with products that you possibly have at home. This is a plastic uh, serving kind of dish that I got years ago for, um, I think it was New Year's Eve. And I've never used it ever since. It was just a one-time thing. So I decided to turn it into a riser because I really love that shape of it. So here I am painting it in a great base coat. And I just give it good two coats of paint. And then this is the terracotta color that I custom made at home and I mixed baking powder in it and to add a lot of texture in it. Uh, I found that baking powder tends to make a little bit more, makes it a little thicker, I should say, versus baking soda. And I really like the texture of this one better. So I just did, you could say about a 20% baking powder to 80 percent paint and i've just used regular latex paint this is the color i mixed when i made my big three foot uh, vase and i will link that video uh, for you guys to actually see if you haven't done so it was it was a really nice vase it turned out really pretty so i was showing you over there the texture that it created from just the paint itself and i'm using a very well loved very very well loved uh, brush and just to add texture, just adds more. So this piece right here is a wooden piece that I used in 2020 for my Christmas decoration. It was for my kid's tree in the basement and it said stink, stank, and stunk. It was a Grinch theme as 2020 did. So um, I didn't need it anymore. I wasn't using it for anything. So I decided to use it as a base on my riser to kind of give it a little bit more character. And I will show you how I will cover up the little gap that it shows from the riser having a little bit of a lip on the bottom. But again, I'm covering it up with the um, gray paint. And I only did one coat because I don't need a lot of it. Here I'm adding a little bit of popsicle stick because I told you guys it had a little bit of a lip. And yeah, don't do what I'm showing you. Measure it, cut it up, and then do it. Or better yet, you can even make it on the, uh, stick it to the wood piece directly. I ended up putting it down like that and then I fix it later and I'll show you later. Uh, these are the little feet that I'm using and that was Antique Wax by Waverly. I did, I believe, two coats of it and as soon as I painted, I let it sit for 30 seconds or so and then I wiped it down, or a minute maybe, and I wiped it down. So I did that a couple of times just because 
um, I was going to go over here with the Deep Antique by Bears, and this is in the cream wax, and it just gave a lot of character and color to the feet, which I loved with that terracotta piece. So I went ahead and did the whole thing, and here you see I fixed my little boo-boo, my mistake that I made, and I will paint uh, everything. Again, the terracotta color, and this tray can be used throughout the whole year because it's not very specific besides the decoration that you'll put on top that'll be more specific to the season and this is a golden garland that i'm using um i don't know where i got it from i've had it in my stash for years i usually use these kind of things when i make cards so i might have had it from there uh i just added on and i was seeing here to see i was seeing to if i wanted to do double layer but nah, single was good and i'm adding the feet and eventually you'll see i color paint the whole thing uh, terracotta color and this is what I've done to the whole thing I let it all dry cure and then I just decorated and staged it for you guys to look at and I really really hope you guys like it and let me know in the comments if you do This is my last but not the least DIY number three, which will be a spring beaded garland, which you can use during Easter as well. It's going to have, um, it has basically pink, blues, and yellow uh, beads, different size beads with some Easter eggs that I got from uh, Dollar Tree, the foam glittery ones that I painted in plaster color by Waverly and the pink beads I think it's ballet slippers that has been watered down and here is the pattern that I'm showing you guys what it's going to look like and all these beads I got them basically from hub from sorry not Hobby Lobby Michaels and um Amazon so all I've done is strung them together this is the end of it and I'm making two tassels for either end of the uh, garland and this is about a 52 inch garland so it's pretty long and i wanted it to use it on my ladder and i'll show you guys pictures at the end you don't have to but that's the purpose i made it for so i'm cutting the tr the ends of it this jute twine is from dollar tree from their tool section i believe uh, and i'm just making a regular tassel now my beaded garland has a little bit of a twist towards the end you guys will see it soon um, I haven't seen anybody do this, so it's pretty new to me. I just decided to, I thought it would look really pretty. That's why I did it. And it's very unique. So I made the tassels and I'm taking this macrame comb that I bought from Michaels when their macrame stuff was 90% off. And I'm just using it to brush the ends off. And here I trim it all so it looks nice and even, um, just so that it's not looking shabby. Um, I love doing it like that. I made two of them, one for either end of it, and that's how long the garland is. Now this Easter bunny, I'm calling it Easter bunny, but um, it's a bunny. I purchased it many, many years ago from Michael's when they were having their um, after, Christ after Easter sale. And I just basically painted it with the same color as the other beads are, the yellow green kind of beads. Um, and I just added it to one end of the tassel and the other one is just bare. Now this is where I'm talking about a twist. I made tiny little tassels with some embroidery floss and I'll show you in a second how to make them, how I made them at least. Um, this is the embroidery floss, just regular embroidery floss and some um, just wire from Dollar Tree and I'm just twisting them with my pliers cutting it to the length and just putting some hot glue at the end of the egg and I'm just hot gluing it in. The eggs had the ribbon for uh, the ornaments to hang and I just took them off and they had a hole. So instead of leaving the hole or filling it up, I just decided to um, make little tassels and hang them at the end. And they look really, really cute and different and unique and that's what I like. So this is what I did to the garland and let's see how it all looks together. 